Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today we're going to talk about how we can ease away disease with Dr. Mitri Shankar, who wrote a wonderful book called Ease. I was going to say good morning to her, but it's actually nighttime. She's staying up late to do this because she actually is coming to us live from India. So please welcome her to the show. Nice to see you. Hey, thanks, uh, Chef AJ, for having me on your show. Of course. Well, <laughs> congratulations on your book. Thank you. What, would you like to tell us a little bit about it? And I made sure that there's links in the show notes and in the chat so people can purchase it if they like. Yeah, sure. I think the last time I was on your show, I, I was just uh, still uh, studying for my uh, lifestyle medicine boards. And uh, uh, I think it was right through somewhere between COVID and now uh, the book is out. Um, it is uh, mainly a return to help uh, my uh, patients uh, uh, and, and general public, uh, you know, teaching them how they can nourish their bodies with uh, nutrients, uh, cherish their lives with uh, joy and gratitude and flourish without succumbing to the perils of uh, common uh, modern lifestyle ailments like uh, excess weight, diabetes, you know, high blood pressure, cancer, heart disease, inflammation, memory loss, uh, all, all, you know, the disorders of the gut, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, kind of focus to help them build the skills needed at a grassroots level. Um, uh, I've tried to create some effective solutions, uh, helping them transform uh, in, in terms of how to cook, uh, predominantly vegan, you know, plant-based, low-fat, whole foods, uh, exercise effectively, uh, you know, develop these kind of habits, uh, manage stress and relationships, uh, sleep peacefully, uh, sleep much better. So basically, this is a book for everyone, whether you're a patient or a fellow doctor or a nutritionist or a health coach. A uh, lot of practical tips and tools uh, with uh, real life case examples, a uh, lot of pictures and uh, proven insights. So I, I do hope uh, people will uh, find it useful and informative. That's great. Well, thank you. I love the title. Yeah. Yeah. We were trying to remove the dis part from the disease. So uh, we, we were playing around with a few names, something to do with healing or something to do with well-being or good health. And uh, this seemed apt. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that people are uh, connecting the two dots, you know, removing the dis part from uh, disease. Yeah. That is great. That is great. Did you want to um, share some slides with us today and talk about something? Yeah, sure. Uh, let's uh, let's get some uh, slides uh, going. Uh, the first slide would be like the picture of the book, the uh, front page uh, of the book. Uh, it's mainly titled uh, "Ease," and you can see a little wait, leaf. Wait, wait, let me let me get it up. I've got to pull it up. So just give me one second because sure. yeah. I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna run it for you. No problem. I just got to get where. Are they? Yeah. Yeah, where are they? Oh, we practiced it, you know, of course it's not working <laughs> now. So just, oh, here it is. I my because you're using Microsoft. That's okay. I've got it up. Hold on. Um, I think you can oh, see great. them now, yeah. guys. And let me just uh, play from the beginning. There we go. Nope, we gotta, gotta make it full yeah, screen. Okay, okay. Uh, perfect. You just tell me when you want me to advance. Uh, yeah, I think I can see it. So uh, basically, uh, you can actually see it's all in the green team going with the vegan or the uh, uh, green planet or a healthier planet uh, kind of the ethos it subscribes to. A little leaf inside the A, alphabet A, that was a creative thing my uh, uh, designer was uh, got to do. Uh, uh, pretty much uh, it, 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 it did well. Uh, it became an Amazon bestseller and we have all the six uh, pillars of uh, lifestyle medicine. The creative actually came in from uh, something very similar, which they did in Wimbledon. Uh, they had these colors and you know, the first, first picture on the book, uh, I didn't want to have my face on the book, but my my publishers felt that this is more like a conversation or a consultation so it would have a better connect if, the, if my face were, were to be there 
And uh, uh, I really, the first picture was, you know, I was just in my regular Western clothes. And then they said, no, it's uh, kind of built to an Indian population. So that's the story behind why I, I got behind a sari and a bindi to make that connect with the public and to bring in that uh, Indianized uh, version. Uh, the the book happened uh, mainly because uh, there, there there was there, most of the information out there was either inadequate or uh, inappropriate uh, so much in an Indian context uh, inadequate because uh, most of the American or the U.S. kind of uh, uh, books or uh, guidelines or even UK based uh, it's very westernized in terms of availability of products or for for example uh, kale or broccoli. They, these don't grow so easily in India. And even if they do, it's kind of uh, quite expensive and half my patients can't really afford it. And even the ones who can afford it, it's uh, hard for them to inculcate these kind of products in the Indian cuisine. So I was trying to bridge that and bring in uh, what grows in India. I'm, I'm, I am an organic gardener and my garden won a national award. Uh, so trying to uh, explain about 20, 30 herbs in there which kind uh, can be grown easily in India uh, in, in the tropical climate there and what dishes these can be used in. So that, that's how the book um, came, came about. And uh, it, it's been receiving good reviews. Uh, I think on the next slide, um, I think even uh, Neil, uh, uh, Dr. Neil Bernard was uh, kind enough to send me good reviews. Oh, and uh, two, yeah. Uh, I, so love, two I love it. I love what you write on the book, dispelling ignorance intelligently. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to, uh, uh, you know, get the right information out there. And uh, three or four other uh, Padma Shri uh, 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 award winning uh, physicians. Padma Shri is the highest civilian award uh, any Indian uh, physician can get. And uh, in three categories, a cardiologist, an oncologist, and uh, uh, and. Uh, uh, all the three uh, specialists, we have uh, cardiologist, uh, Dr. Devi Shetty, uh, endocrinologist, Dr. Uh, Amrish, and uh, surgical oncologist, Dr. Uh, Kodalur. Uh, all of them have given good reviews. So we were trying to have it reviewed from different specialists who deal with these kind of uh, diseases on a regular basis. Um, and on my next slide, uh, you will see the picture on the back of the book. It's uh, basically a scale. And uh, what we were trying to show here is the good versus the bad, uh, including the six pillars of lifestyle medicine, uh, the heavier uh, part, which has the food, the exercise, sleep, um, uh, meditation, you know, uh, positive psychology, connections, things like that. Uh, which should be closer and heavier and uh, more meaningful to your heart. And uh, on the other side is uh, the lighter side, which you want to stay away from, or the unnecessary medication, smoking, alcohol, um, and uh, digital addictions, uh, if you will, which kind of lead to the diseases. So that is what we were trying to uh, depict in, in this picture, which uh, goes on the back of the book. Um, you know, uh, between these two, it's it's the willpower which lets us uh, decide between the good and the bad. Uh, that's the easy part. And what you can see in the next slide is the next picture is uh, this uh, type of a chariot. This picture is from the uh, Bhagavad Gita, a very popular Indian uh, mythology, uh, where you can see the horses, which are the senses, if you will, if you can control your senses uh, through the reins. That's that's the willpower. Uh, and the charioteer in himself is the intellect, uh, intellect as in the conscious and the subconscious. Uh, it's, it's if we can build the skills in the, in the horses, build them to take you to the right destination, they always will, even when you don't really have to control the reins or the willpower every time. So that is the type of connect we were trying to do. And uh, I hope this uh, book uh, brings out that kind of uh, knowledge and information to be readers. Um, on, on the next picture, you will see um, the contents of the book, approximately about 14 chapters. 
Uh, the first chapter, I uh, start off with uh, my journey uh, and not so much the destination, uh, why I got into uh, uh, lifestyle medicine after practicing nuclear medicine for about 27 years. And uh, a nuclear medicine being functional medicine, we do see these uh, lifestyle diseases. That's what I've been doing all my life for 25 years, both in the US and in uh, back, back here in India. And uh, only when I myself was uh, diagnosed with diabetes, the parts of the puzzle started to fit in. Uh, you know, uh, this this was eventually uh, me reaching uh, my uh, finding my meaning and purpose, if you will. And uh, uh, and it goes on. There are about three or four chapters about food in particular, uh, food elements. You know, the micronutrients, macronutrients, fiber, salt. Um, and then there's an entire chapter on uh, kitchen is your personal food pharmacy. Uh, it has topics on how to buy food, be it organic, GMO, processed foods, animal-based foods, uh, milk, which is quite popular here in India. Uh, there's the A1, A2 milk, and there's a lot of marketing hype around this. Uh, there are plant-based uh, milks and uh, uh, some some tips on uh, food safety, endocrine disruptors, and a bit on how to grow your own food, uh, be it microgreens or even herbs or simple stuff like uh, leaves for your green tea and such. And simple things which you can do prepping the food, uh, like, uh, you know, soaking, sprouting, uh, fermenting, uh, you know, both the prebiotic and probiotic, making curd, peanut curd, things like that, yogurt. Um, and there's another uh, section on healthier cooking techniques being, uh, you know, water sorting or the, the works. And uh, we have also tried to put in a few uh, cheat sheets for um, you know, juicing, be it salads, making soups or even a general uh, uh, menu planning. Um, in India, the yogic, uh, there is a concept of sattvic foods. So, you know, the, there is, a, a, it, it's, a, a, it, it has a, its own uh, origin from the um, Indian uh, yogic uh, sciences. So we have a little bit, uh, I have like, explained a bit on that. And uh, the, uh, I think the fourth chapter is all about uh, uh, habits and habitat, you know, being clean, clean lean and green uh, inside and outside. Uh, talking about the different fat diets out there, the grain hierarchy, uh, what are the alternative choices available, especially in the Indian context where we are very grain heavy eaters, uh, we're very, very grain heavy. So uh, how, how do you understand uh, the different grains and where do they fall in, you know, starting from white rice to wheat and the different millets available? Uh, uh, a few notes on uh, a satiety index and calorie density um, and why physical activity is important and the different types of exercises, uh, what, what, what is, uh, you know, be it cardio, endurance, why is muscle building important for women and the older age uh, group, people, um, flexibility, things like that. And I think it's also in this chapter, I mentioned a few things I learned from you on your shows. I've mentioned your name there. Uh, it's uh, some master tips and on good habits. So I thought uh, that that was also one of the reasons I, I sent out a copy to you because I, I have, this has been accumulative of uh, all the learnings which happened to me during the past two to three years, immediately after I was diagnosed with diabetes. I was searching for ways and methods uh, what can I do to kind of uh, uh, stop myself from starting medications? So uh, a shout out to you over there. And uh, uh, and also uh, the chapters continue. There is one chapter which is uh, all about uh, why we need to change. You've got to figure out the why and what makes you cry, like they say. Um, and a, a few things about epigenetics, where genes are not your destiny. And then it uh, spans out to each and every disease. There's a chapter dedicated to each disease. There's one for diabetes, uh, one for heart disease, uh, one chapter entirely dedicated to cancer and carcinogens in the environment, in the food, what, what, in everything we use, the cosmetics, uh, everything around us, what we use in our daily lives, which could have a carcinogenic burden, uh, including the, uh, uh, the uh, radiation 
information from cell phones and the latest guidelines on, on that. So I've tried to cover as much as possible on, on the cancer chapter as well. Um, and then there is another chapter on uh, bone health, uh, muscle related health, uh, and uh, also uh, uh, inflammation that's also covered. Um, the last three chapters are my uh, kind of favorite. The chapter 12 would be, uh, I titled it as a limited intelligence and infinite ignorance. I think it's sometimes because uh, what we what we know and what we don't know, if we compare the two, somehow what we don't know seems to be a lot more than what we know. So uh, once once we accept that, I think uh, uh, it, it becomes uh, very easy to unlearn some of your uh, older learnings and relearn the newer uh, uh, things. Um, and a few things on stress management, positive psychology, just very simple uh, things. Uh, uh, and also I've tried to integrate different modalities of uh, uh, medicine, be it the Ayurveda, acupressure, homeopathy, uh, allopathy, uh, things, uh, things like that. Uh, after every chapter, there is a synopsis, uh, a one quick summary, half page or one page summary of each chapter. Uh, so uh, uh, it, 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 it's, it's a good uh, uh, way to look at that and then delve deeper into the chapter of of their interest, of your interest. So uh, that, that's all about, about the book. And uh, I have a few pictures uh, from the book I wanted to share. Uh, in the, then I think in the next slide, you can see, uh, you know, there's, uh, th this is a picture which has all the phytonutrients available in the leaves uh, which, uh, and the greens, which can be grown in India in this tropical climate uh, versus kale and broccoli, which is not so easy to grow. Um, and my uh, next picture is about the, I think, Maslow's uh, hierarchy of the life needs. Once, once you, fin once you, uh, it's it's like the uh, pyramid of growth. Uh, once your basic needs are attended to, uh, safety-wise, love, belonging-wise, self-esteem-wise, that's when the self-actualization steps in, and only then you are ready to give in, or once your own cup is full. Uh, and I think uh, that that leads me to the next picture which is uh, finding my uh, ikigai and I hope this book will help the readers uh, find theirs uh, in, in terms of health so uh, when when all the four circles uh, uh, you know merge between passion mission vocation and profession and when 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 you love what you do and you do what the world needs and you will also get paid for doing it. And you are really good at doing it. That's essentially finding your ikigai. And I think that's what uh, lifestyle medicine uh, has brought to me in, in the long run. So um, I, I was happy to share that. Um, and I think in the next picture, uh, what, what I'm trying to say here is, uh, you know what, sometimes we seem to think a medication is what makes us healthy, but uh, what really makes us healthy is our lifestyle. And uh, essentially a lot of that is food, uh, a bit of uh, physical activity, emotions, habits, stress management, sleep, of course, uh, bring in and uh, uh, bring in that kind of health and uh, happiness. And uh, 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 and in, in, in this uh, in this book, I've also tried to uh, connect uh, in the in the, like what I, I think it's shown in the next picture. Uh, it, it, I'm trying to connect uh, how it, traditional Indian wisdom versus modern uh, technological advances, modern medicine, uh, starting from about 20. 30 correlations, if you will, um, you know, be it the uh, bad bugs or the dysbiosis which happens in the gut, there is this concept of uh, a spit or angel, I speak about that in the book, and now we are uh, seeing fecal transplants and gut microbiota concepts emerging. Um, Indian, uh, we also uh, we also practice uh, fasting, which is ekadasi, uh, and I think many other cultures around the world also do that, reiterating the uh, rest and digest uh, cycles. Uh, concepts of ahimsa, dharma, and karma, which are essentially uh, in sync with the ethos of uh, you know plant-based foods and uh, being vegan, essentially. 
uh, yogic breathing, uh, energy exchanges, uh, the Ayurvedic body composition types. A lot of this I've tried to cover because uh, the outer world or the macrocosm influences what happens inside our body, the inner world. The seed gerbers, uh, be it sunlight, exercise, eating, they all have a very strong influence on health. And that again, uh, influence, you know, things how what happens in our mind, what, what we align with, what we know, what we think, how we feel, what we say, or what we do. Only when all these things are in alignment, that's when uh, that leads to happiness. And uh, when there is a balance between conflict and disease, there is uh, there is conflict. That's when when the harmony is broken. That's when disease emerges. So uh, that's truly the essence of the uh, WHO definition of health, which includes uh, mind, body, and spirit. Um, so that's that's what I've tried to uh, say in this uh, picture here. And uh, uh, the next picture is about uh, lifestyle medicine. Uh, I'm happy the uh, illustrated it a good picture of what I was trying to look at the Michelangelo picture of medicine and trying to uh, include that into lifestyle medicine, depicting the uh, micro and the macro chasms, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, Ayurvedic way of saying the Vata, Pitta, Kapha cycles, the circadian rhythm, the different organ systems, the six pillars of lifestyle medicine, the fight and the flight cycles and the rest and digest uh, cycles. So uh, there he was able to get it all in there together. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's that's how the book uh, came about, and uh, I'm I'm trying to connect uh, uh, traditional Indian wisdom, uh, uh, even with uh, how we see it, look at it in uh, yoga and the breathing exercises, like you can see in the next picture. Uh, the yoga, there is scientific evidence which shows that uh, can stimulate the parasympathetic nervous systems and how that how the play out happens between the uh, fight and flight mechanisms and the rest and digest mechanisms. Uh, that's kind of uh, depicted here. Um, and I think uh, in some of my last few slides, uh, you can uh, uh, see how lifestyle medicine should be the foundation of every medical specialty, because in, in some ways, uh, we doctors are trained to kind of uh, 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 mop the floor and never really turn off the tap. Uh, so uh, we, we need to recognize that and stop, uh, uh, stop uh, our patients from climbing these cliffs rather than uh, just catching them falling off these cliffs. So uh, that's, that's uh, uh, every specialty should first offer lifestyle medicine and then uh, uh, medications or surgery. So that, that's what I was trying to say in this picture. So uh, this, these are some of the pictures from the book. And uh, I also did a TED talk recently on this TEDx talk. And uh, in the next three or four pictures, I will share some of uh, in some in the next few slides. I'll share some of the pictures I showed on the TEDx talk. Um, and that's that's uh, breast cancer, which you can uh, see. And uh, uh, the message here was that. Um, what you're seeing is a PET CT scan, which is what I do as a nuclear medicine physician every day. Um, and what you're seeing here is cancer feeding on uh, uh, the glucose in the cancer cells. Uh, and uh, so as to speak, that's essentially fluorodeoxyglucose. It's an analog of glucose. And this is what cancer uh, feeds on. Uh, fat and sugar fuel the growth of cancer and spread of cancer. So, uh, and also the uh, uh, genes, uh, Some there are some predispositions from the genes to some particular types of cancer. Uh, when you're looking at uh, BRCA gene, uh, that could be uh, related to uh, breast and uh, certain other gynecological cancers, but not everybody has this gene, nor does everyone with the gene end up getting cancer. Sometimes it's the uh, epigenetic factors which trigger these genes on and off like switches. Uh, making the cells go berserk and turn in, turn cancerous and uh, spread uh, fat uh, and wide in the body. Um, that's what this picture is uh, 
saying. And uh, in, in my next picture, uh, you can see the heart scans that we do, uh, which are uh, myocardial perfusion stress scans. Um, you can see the blockages in the heart, which are caused by the fat in the food. There are two test tubes on the right-hand side. One is uh, from uh, after eating a vegetarian sandwich, and the other is after a double-decker cheeseburger. So I'm, I'm sure you can guess which is which here. So, uh, and also what actually got into the blood vessels causing those clots, uh, because of which the patient had to have uh, open uh, bypass uh, surgery and have stents uh, put in. So that's uh, kind of uh, giving a visual correlation uh, of how uh, severely damaging the foods uh, we eat can, uh, you know, uh, ca cause such detrimental uh, damage to uh, important organ systems in, in the body. And uh, in the next picture, I think uh, we have the um, uh, uh, bricks uh, in from my garden. Actually, every monsoon in India, whenever there is a, it rains, uh, the uh, bricks uh, get this kind of moss. And similarly, we also uh, what the food we eat becomes the substrate to a lot of microbes which grow on the food. And uh, we also do the gut scans. And the gut scans we do uh, can vary, the graphs can vary depending upon the form of food, solid, liquid. Um, uh, uh, what I was trying to make the connect here is that uh, uh, gut, the gut microbes in 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 the gut uh, of the good or the bad act as a second brain and they talk to the main brain uh, via the gut microbiota axis influencing our feelings and even the choices of the foods that we make so it's important uh, and it's a vicious cycle uh, so it's important to recognize this and be aware of this uh, and in my next uh, picture uh, this is a, a dopamine scan. We do this scan for patients with Parkinson's. And uh, the correlation I was trying to make is between the uh, uh, dopamine uh, receptors, which, which are essentially the dopa trap, the uh, pleasure trap, uh, and how the uh, uh, profit mongers or the multi-million dollar uh, industry giants uh, hire food scientists to come up with this perfect combination of uh, SOS, salt, oil, and sugar, which can kind of have you addicted to the foods. Uh, and that's why it is so difficult to get, get uh, off these foods. And that's why it's uh, very important to recognize the uh, uh, how the industry players uh, profit at the cost of uh, our health. Uh, and uh, that's, that's the picture I was trying to show here. Um, I think uh, that brings me to my uh, last uh, slide, which is my now my consultation suite and my garden. Uh, uh, we do it in open air uh, with the family and the family members. So everybody is on board with the necessary changes in the food and uh, things like that. Um, so uh, I think uh, I, I, I do hope the uh, viewers will uh, uh, pick up a copy of the book and uh, uh, find it interesting uh, and enjoy reading it as much as I did writing it. Wow, let me, okay, I'm gonna, that is a, that's an incredibly beautiful garden. Thank you. Well, and, and so you're doing your consultations there. Uh, we try to do that during uh, COVID. We also have a, 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 a garden space with a studio built in. We have a kitchen studio and we have a yoga space. So a lot of these activities uh, happen side by side. And when they come in the evenings, we sit and chat with them and get them on board. Uh, you know, when, 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 wherever and whenever we need to talk to them about these things. You know, there was actually one more slide in your presentation. Do you want me to pull it up? Or it was a, the, the looked like the Roman Colosseum. Ah, okay. So I think that was a slide uh, with my family and that's my son many years right. ago. Let me see if uh, I can pull it up for you. Let me get that up for you. Mm -hmm. So you can talk about it. Here we go. Okay. Oops. Let's get to uh -huh. it again. Woo. I just did. Whoop. Okay. Ah, uh, hold on. Let's do that again. One, two, three. Yeah, I was curious as ice cream cone and. 
There we go. There we go. Nope, that's it. That was your last slide. Yeah. So, uh, oh my God, that's the problem with dude, I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, three times a charm. I'm going to just stop when I'm there. We go. Nope, there we go. You want to talk about that slide? Are you yeah. Oh, so uh, that's my family a long time ago, many years, 15 years ago, maybe. And that's my uh, youngest son uh, trying to eat uh, ice cream. And uh, he's looking up at this uh, gladiator, uh, you know, he's half his size then. And uh, only later, a few years uh, recently, we realized, you know, when the gladiators were uh, vegetarian. And now my son is taller than me and the gladiator, and they, they are completely on uh, a vegetarian protein, vegan uh, kind of protein. So uh, I, I always look at it and I have a smile on my face. So I thought oh. I'd share it with you guys. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. Okay, now we go. I'm just curious, is your book available on Audible as well? Uh, not yet. I need to work on that. Uh, it is available on Amazon, uh, both uh, the Kindle version and uh, the hard copy version, both in India and abroad. That is fantastic. So are you still working in nuclear medicine or just doing lifestyle medicine now? Oh, no, I am full time nuclear medicine. And uh, I, I try to incorporate lifestyle medicine as much as possible. Uh, we actually started the uh, very first uh, hospital-based uh, uh, physician-led lifestyle medicine program in, in our hospital. Uh, we are apparently the first in South Asia as of now. So we've been trying to uh, work with the other uh, specialists within, uh, within the hospital uh, infrastructure, trying to create awareness about this and uh, structuring programs uh, into which we can enroll our patients to, uh, mainly to help them uh, build the necessary skills uh, needed to make that kind of a transformation. I mean, the book is out there, it's all information, but to uh, make that kind of transformation, they will need some hand-holding and uh, hands-on uh, training. So we are working on that part right now. Nice. In case people don't aren't familiar with the specialty of nuclear medicine, what is it? And are you able to incorporate what you know from lifestyle medicine with your patients? Oh, yeah, sure. So nuclear medicine is a super speciality of uh, radiology uh, and uh, internal medicine, if you will. So uh, in radiology, what happens is we shoot the radiation from outside the body, through the body, and then we take pictures on the other end, right? I mean, CT scan or MRI. But in nuclear medicine, uh, there's a special radioisotopes which are tagged with radi radiation, and that's given into the body internally, either through an injection or orally through mouth. And that goes and settles down in the organ of interest very specific to which organ system we are trying to look at. Uh, for example, we, we do about over 30, 40 different types of scans uh, specific to the organ system. Uh, in, in cancer, we do PET CT scans, which look at the stage of cancer, how far it has spread, which is the main uh, basis on which the treatment is based on, be it chemo, radiation, or surgery. Uh, we do heart scans to see how the heart behaves at stress. Uh, so uh, what we are looking at is essentially function of the cell uh, at a microscopic level when subjected to certain uh, parameters. It could be stress in the heart, or it could be an iodine uh, type of a scenario in the thyroid, uh, uh, um, or just the glucose metabolism, the rate of glucose metabolism in, in cancer cells. So, uh, and not only do we use this to image or do scanning or diagnostics, we also use the same radioisotopes to treat uh, or to uh, theranostics, it is called. Uh, we treat thyroid cancer, we treat uh, prostate cancer, liver cancer, uh, and quite a few newer modalities are coming out there. So uh, what it allows us to do is precision radiation therapy. We can go into the organ and then just burn it, only that area, without burning anything else in the course like what would happen in, in regular uh, radiation therapy. 
So uh, it, it, it is very precise. Uh, a lot of new technological uh, advances are expected to happen in the next few years. And uh, uh, we, we interface with many other specialities. So our uh, uh, referrals or our, uh, you know, the uh, interdepartmental networks are already set in. We, the patients would be going through our department at some point. Uh, so it becomes an, a great catchment area where we can uh, make use of that and uh, help the patients recognize, for example, every PET scan patient, PET CT scan patient, we check the blood glucose level. And quite often we make the diagnosis of diabetes at, at our department. The patient might not even know about it. A glucose level of 300 is uh, a, a level where we cannot inject and go ahead with the PET CT scans. Uh, multiple multiple case scenarios, heart, heart disease uh, patients with stents, we do scans which uh, uh, show whether uh, revascularization surgery, bypass surgery would help or not. We look at viability of the cardiac tissue. So we do a lot of uh, endocrine scans like the thyroid or the uh, parathyroid scan. So it's a great uh, 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 subject where we uh, see a diverse cases of uh, patients with uh, chronic or lifestyle diseases and uh, also have an uh, excellent opportunity to offer this as, a, as an adjuvant into their uh, treatment or management. Great, thanks. When did you first get into following a plant-based diet yourself and why? Yeah, I think about two to three years ago, I was diagnosed with diabetes and um, my own colleagues, about three or four of them, all endocrine super specialists, uh, they put me on medications, same medication, same dosage, same uh, drug. Uh, uh, and uh, somehow uh, I looked it up. I looked up the uh, side effects and uh, bad taste in the mouth also was one of them. Uh, I could actually taste the bad taste even before I took the medication. So uh, thus my uh, search began, I was looking for alternatives. And uh, I, I think there is a lot of data now there which substantiates that uh, 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 you know, a plant-based uh, diet can bring down insulin resistance. And uh, uh, it took me about a year. Uh, I'm, I'm from the Southern part of India where uh, curd rice or yogurt rice, or it's, it's very, that's our staple diet. So that was my hardest uh, part. Giving up uh, milk or tea was easy. Uh, green tea or black coffee, those were simple switches. But uh, uh, being able to make uh, peanut curd the right way at home, my Instapot comes in very handy for that. And uh, training uh, my, uh, my staff or you know people who help me in the kitchen uh, to do it without supervision, uh, that, that's been... Uh, very helpful, actually. So uh, my journey started, I think, three, two, three years ago. But uh, for about a year now, I am 99.99% uh, <laughs> vegan, I would say. Yeah. That's fantastic. Is it, is it hard to uh, explain to people the, about oil? Yeah, uh, about oil, did you say? I'm sorry. Yeah, oil, I, you know, because I've, I've heard, because it's such a part of, of most Indian cuisine. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it, it is. I have an a entire uh, a chapter and a couple of pictures uh, in the book about the fat matrix, the good fats and the uh, bad fats. And uh, also there is a tabular column which uh, talks about the oils. Uh, there, there are... Uh, different uh, MUFA and PUFA combinations in the common oils which are used here in India, groundnut peanut oil being one of them, sunflower oil, uh, and uh, Y palm oil, is, uh, which is a very common adulterant in most of the other oils which we buy. Uh, and uh, ghee, of course, clarified butter is, uh, is, is a very common uh, food item here. So uh, I, I have a nice uh, picture in the book uh, showing uh, what are the compositions of the uh, oils uh, in all of these different type of uh, all the composition of the fatty acids in all of these different types of oils and why we need to uh, uh, stay away from the saturated fats and uh, 
uh, trans fats, which are very high in butter and uh, ghee, and why we need to avoid bakery and other uh, uh, deep fried foods, which are very popular here. Uh, it, it, it is uh, 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 quite hard. And in our courses, we teach them, especially the samosas and stuff. We, we have cooking demos where we show them how to make the baked version or a healthier version of versus the deep fried version. So um, I think uh, being aware and choosing the right oil, having uh, uh, a couple of them at least to rotate between them, uh, these, this, it, it's, it's very uh, important for them to understand this and uh, make those changes in the kitchen. Is it, is it easy or hard to get a compliant vegan oil-free meal in an Indian restaurant in India? I know it's pretty hard in the United States. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, you know, my son just joined uh, UC Davis last uh, two months ago. So my, uh, he, 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 he tells me, uh, I think pretty much every uh, restaurant now somehow has a vegan option. That's what I hear in the US. Is that right? Not every, but I think I think many it's do. It's becoming right? more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like Burger King and McDonald's, the popular ones at least somehow have this. Is what I'm being told. Uh, I think in India, it it uh, it still needs to uh, 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 come up uh, more. Uh, but if you specifically ask for uh, no oil or no ghee. Uh, there, there would be a lot of dishes which would come under that category in a South Indian restaurant, you know, the regular idli, those are most of it without the oil or the ghee. Uh, they wouldn't use so much of uh, 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 animal products in that. Uh, uh, tea, coffee, again, milk would be in it. So you would have to maneuver your way and uh, uh, get them to make it the way you like it. Uh, but it, it, it is still in the very, we have about three, four restaurants, I think, in entire Bangalore today who are uh, vegan, vegan, uh, completely vegan. Yeah. Nice. You, um, do you visit your son? Because you see Davis is about an hour from me. Oh, is that right? Okay. Uh, I plan to maybe next year uh, once he graduates uh, or something like that. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. There is a question from a live viewer. Do you make tofu based sag paneer? Ah, yes. Uh, no, I don't. We get the ready made kind, uh, both the tempeh and the soy chunks. Uh, I particularly don't like so much, uh, but uh, my sons do. Uh, we, we, we have uh, transitioned to uh, soy uh, quite a bit from regular paneer. Yeah. Nice. What do you eat in a day? if I may ask? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, my day starts off with uh, a, a green a smoothie, just flax seeds and spinach and something after my workout. And uh, my regular uh, breakfast, uh, the healthy version, like if I'm making poha, I would probably do it with oats. If I'm making dosa, I would probably do it with millets for my breakfast, uh, whatever South Indian breakfast uh, we eat. And uh, lunch is uh, pretty much a very small cup of uh, millets and a lot of uh, sambar or dal or curry with it. Uh, maybe a fruit, definitely, and some uh, vegetables. Uh, I've been trying to do intermittent fasting. So my last meal, five o'clock. Uh, so when I come home, uh, you know, I try to have a bigger salad and soups. Uh, I, I do big soups. Uh, and uh, if at all, I haven't had uh, enough time to finish my lunch. So whatever is, 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 is there for lunch uh, would also suffice. So uh, pretty much it's a, a, a whole food plant-based kind of a meal uh, with as less oil as uh, possible. And uh, more than 50 to 60% is uh, fruits and vegetables. And very at least quarter of the plate is uh, grain heavy, grain uh, filled with grain. And uh, I try to get in some of my uh, protein there. I'm, I'm not big on uh, uh, paneer or uh, the uh, alternatives to paneer or uh, the other kind, soy uh, kind of a thing. So I try to get all my protein from just dal and lentils. So uh, that's, that's typical uh, Indian uh, diet there. Wow. Do you, is your diabetes completely gone? 
Uh, I hope so. It's been waxing and waning. My hemoglobin A1C was 7.8. Uh, it came down to 5.5, uh, but again, it went up to 6.2. So it kind of goes up and down. I am still either uh, pre-diabetic or uh, normal. Uh, but uh, still in the range where I don't have to start uh, medications. So I'm keeping a close eye, you know, the holiday seasons, uh, th this is the time where it's really hard to control. Uh, and marriages, especially in India, uh, they, they are big fat Indian weddings and it's uh, really uh, uh, hard to control uh, what you eat when you go out uh, to uh, a social gathering. Um, just in the last week, I think I have attended four weddings and uh, four uh, almost every other day. And these are like really elaborate. So uh, I really have to burn, burn whatever I have. But it's, it's good. I mean, I think the main uh, two or three things which help me control my diabetes is a portion control. Even if I eat, I eat just one or two, uh, uh, you know, uh, bites of whatever, even if it is a sweet or a dessert or chocolate, just one little bite and that's it. I don't finish the whole chocolate bar or whatever. Uh, and even despite that, my sugars can be under control. So that's that's what I'm still grateful for. Uh, portion control and uh, increasing fiber and uh, doing a bit of exercise post me, just going for a quick walk or walking up and down the stairs. Uh, these things uh, help a lot. And understanding the glycemic index of the foods. I mean, if I really want to eat a fruit, there are so many fruits which have low glycemic index. All this I have explained in detail in the book, uh, which uh, I really wish somebody had returned this book before I got diabetes because I could just go read it and be done with it. I didn't have to. Uh, I think I have read about more than 300 books, attended so many courses. Uh, there was so much knowledge which I gained. And oh, I think you froze. Uh oh, well, we are all the way from India. Hello, maybe I can text her. Uh, guys, is she frozen for you or just for me? Let me know in the chat. And oh, uh, there's a question in the chat. I see from Amy, how do you cook doses without oil? Amy, if you search my YouTube channel, because I see you're watching on Facebook, there are seven Indian cooking demos by various chefs, all done without oil, including doses. So consider going to YouTube and subscribing and hitting the notification bell. It's a much better place to watch than on Facebook or Twitter, if you ask me, because there is a lively chat that we call the Zamunity. I'm going to text her because it's possible she doesn't know that she's frozen. All right, uh, you are frozen. Well, I think we did pretty good. Almost the oh, now she's gone. <laughs> well, well, maybe she'll come back. Maybe she won't. I'll give her a minute, but I will tell you who is on the show tomorrow. It's Eileen Kapsaftis. She's a wonderful plant-based physical therapist. Uh, she's been on the show before and you've asked her to come back. And she is going to be talking about how to eliminate pain so that you can move well and age well. And I'll just take another moment to tell you that it would be wonderful if all of you um, would subscribe to YouTube. Chef AJ, hit that notification bell because we're actually going to a new format next year, which is like less than a week away on January 1st. If you're on my mailing list, you will get the lineup emailed to you. Uh, that's why I recommend considering subscribing at chefaj.com. And we send it out once a week, usually Sunday, sometimes Saturday, just what the shows are about. But instead of doing a different show every single day, which has been wonderful, I have done about 1,300, it's more difficult than you can imagine coordinating the guests and getting everything happening. So we sent out an email in August to the over 800 guests that have been on the show asking if anyone would want a regular slot. And uh, over 100 people applied. And we're going to announce that lineup very soon on my email list of the 28. And we start on Sunday. Good, you're back. I, I hate to say goodbye without you there. I figured if I could stall a little bit, you know. I think I lost connection there for a minute. Yeah, you, you actually froze. And I think we were talking about exercise and taking a walk after a meal being good for you and in, in general and for diabetes. And that's the last thing I remember you saying. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yes, that those things really help with uh, uh, 
uh, diabetes and uh, eating a plant-based, uh, low-fat, whole food kind of a diet that has a uh, lot of uh, uh, impact in bringing down the insulin resistance, uh, sleep and stress management, of course, uh, these are the things uh, which can really help you control your sugar levels. Have you been able to influence any of your friends, family members, or even colleagues to eat a plant-based diet? Um, can, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Um, the question was, have you been able to influence any friends, family members, or colleagues to, to adopt a plant-based diet? Uh, we're trying. Uh, I think uh, I wouldn't say completely, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying in my uh, own little way. It's going to take time. It's not easy, especially with uh, the uh, milk and the association of milk with uh, divinity in the Indian context. It's going to be a hard sale. But uh, uh, having what I have been, we, 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 we do have a few meetings in the hospital and what I have been able to do is uh, bring in a mind shift change or awareness towards healthy foods in what we eat, uh, in snacks and uh, what gets served, uh, uh, what regularly we uh, snack around. So um, it's, it's going to take time, but I'm doing my bit. Nice. There's a question from Amy. How do you make dosas without oil? And I was telling her when, when we were frozen that I've had about seven different Indian chefs come on my channel and actually done that. So those videos are there, cooking demos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's actually very easy. And I don't even use nonstick. We use this cast iron tawa, uh, which uh, gets seasoned over time. I think you just have to, it's like riding a horse. You just have to get the hang of it. You need to, uh, you know, uh, get control over it. It, 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 it takes some practice, uh, but uh, it forms this natural coating of uh, uh, the uh, whatever that nonstick lining comes. It's completely natural. And uh, if you ferment the dosa batter just right, it shouldn't be too fermenty. If you can get it right, it, 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 it happens. Uh, it comes out quite easily, actually. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Uh, but above, where in India are you located? Wants to know Renee. Yeah, I'm in uh, Bangalore, which is uh, South India. It's uh, the capital of a, a state called uh, Karnataka, uh, and we speak uh, Kannada here. That's that's our uh, la local language here. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, I just saw a question from Cindy. What are your thoughts on an Ayurvedic diet versus a whole food plant-based diet for health? Yeah, uh, Ayurvedic diet uh, has a lot more of... Uh, 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 nutrient uh, dense, like, you know, they use a lot of uh, turmeric and a uh, lot of seeds and uh, pulses. Uh, not much of a difference between, uh, it's completely plant-based. Um, only one thing what probably is not plant-based is the ghee component. They do use some uh, ghee in uh, the Ayurvedic medication preparations and sometimes even in the uh, food preparations for the seasoning and such. Uh, but uh, it's predominantly vegetarian. Uh, uh, the only major component would be probably some milk and uh, ghee. Other than that, uh, it is all uh, predominantly uh, plant-based, I would say. Mm -hmm. The uh, concepts of Ayurvedic, uh, there, there are concepts of like uh, uh, sattvic food and tamasic food and rajasic food. Again, I have explained that in the book, uh, what each category of these foods can uh, do to the body. Uh, uh, it, it could be the vata, pitta or the kapha cycles. Again, all that is uh, a detailed uh, explanation is, is in the book. Uh, but uh, Except for the uh, ghee and the milk, I think it's predominantly plant-based uh, diet. Nice. Have any of your colleagues read your book? Uh, oh, yeah. We, we had a launch and we had a few uh, books uh, 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 given away. And we also had uh, the initial edition. I had about uh, 30 to 40 doctors contribute essays into the book. Uh, different specialists, surgeons. So I was trying to make this uh, connect. 
and uh, there are about, I can hold it up, I don't know if you can see it, there are about uh, 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 40 to 50 essays, uh, and some uh, couple of them uh, are uh, um, in the context of climate change and uh, why exercise. There was a Fit India movement, a uh, 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 brand ambassador for the Fit India movement. She wrote about a dear friend of mine. Uh, she wrote about muscle strengthening. And uh, Nibi, who, who also was on your show, uh, wrote about how dairy, sugar, and chai became symbols of uh, modern India. Uh, we had a psychiatrist write about uh, food addiction. Uh, so a lot of it, actually, uh, you know, we have had uh, cancer surgeons write about uh, different types of cancers, some of which is related to food and lifestyle. Um, heart surgeons talking about uh, uh, their end of the uh, disease spectrum. Uh, we even had uh, one Ayurvedic doctor uh, and uh, a laughter therapist come in with their in, inputs in, in, in from their own angles to make this uh, book wholesome. This was the very first edition. It was a limited edition. We did not put that on sale. Um, and after that, I think a lot, lot of my uh, doctors, there was this uh, medical student from a city called Chhattisgarh. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's in North India. I've never visited this city. She sent me a picture of three books she purchased on the same day. And she said, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm doing my residency and I'm, I bought three books for my colleagues. And that was probably the best compliment I received. She said, like, you know, I want to be like you when I grow up and things like that. So I think it's, it's uh, doing well. Well, um, even with the doctors, because nutrition is not something we are taught uh, so much in medical schools. And uh, uh, so uh, the book is, 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 it is a great uh, resource to uh, pick up uh, everything, uh, uh, all, all, all the quick and important points, uh, which can be very easily inculcated into daily practice. Wonderful. Here's a quite fun question. What are your favorite spices? Ah, I love uh, cinnamon uh, and I love the chai masala. I just make a quick tea with it. I don't put anything but the chai masala. It has everything in it. Uh, we, we use a lot of turmeric, uh, elaichi, the cardamom. That, that's another favorite for my uh, teas and uh, desserts. I uh, think uh, there's quite a few huh? in, in, in India. We, there are so many spices available and uh, uh Hard to say I don't like any particular one. That's great. Elizabeth wants to know, do, I don't know how to pronounce this name. Do you know Sud, Sud, Sudgura, Sudguru? Yes, S-A-D-H-G-U-R-U, Sudguru. Yes, yes, I do. I have uh, mentioned him in one of the chapters, a lot of learnings. Uh, he had this special course uh, for doctors during COVID time. So I took that course and uh, quite a bit of uh, 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 learnings, uh, which I speak about also in the book, in, in chapter 12, I think it's titled Soul Food. Um, uh, he... Uh, he runs these uh, courses, uh, Chef AJ, it's called Inner Engineering. So there's a lot of uh, yoga and uh, mind conditioning and, you know, also talks about a lot of these uh, uh, sattvic foods. He promotes that. So, um, yeah, yeah, I do know him. Oh, how good. I do know him like as a guru guru, not personally. Yes. Okay. Right. She, Elizabeth says she loves him. What, what disease do you most commonly see in your patients? Uh, I, I, I am into nuclear medicine, so uh, we do a lot of uh, cancer care. We, we, we are uh, the department which uh, does PET CT scans, which stages the cancer. We look at if cancer, the treatment has been given, has worked or not, or has it spread more or not. So about half of my practice is oncology, cancer care, and uh, maybe another 25% would be heart disease. We do a lot of heart scans uh, to see if the blocks have come back or if they have to go back and open it up again after bypass or uh, putting in a stent there. Um, and uh, we do scans for Alzheimer's, for dementia, um, and, and any everything else uh, under the other 15 to 20%, I would say. Is the food in Indian hospitals as bad as the food in American hospitals? <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, but I think it's changed much. Uh, uh, last uh, uh, a few months ago, uh, they introduced a lot of millets, which are uh, the healthier grain compared to white rice in into the hospital cafeteria. But I pack my own lunch, so I I hardly eat uh, that much in 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 the cafeteria. So, yeah. That's great. Well, I think you'll ever write a cookbook, like a companion to this book, maybe? Uh, yes, that's in the works, actually. Um, I am uh, working on uh, a book, uh, more so will probably title it something like culinary medicine or something like that, uh, breaking it break it down, the macro micronutrients, bringing in some uh, very practically adaptable recipes around that. Yes, that's what I... Well, that's what we need is a really wonderful plant-based oil-free cookbook. We've got wonderful plant-based Indian cookbooks from people like Vegan Richa, but I'm not sure if there is an oil-free one. Well, she froze again. So I think I'm going to say goodbye because the hour is up. I hope you guys had a very happy holiday yesterday if you celebrated. And I hope you'll come back tomorrow at the regular time of 11 a.m. when my guest is plant-based physical therapist, Eileen Kapsaftis. I can say her name, Kapsaftis. She's been on the show before and she's wonderful. And she's going to talk about how you can move without experiencing pain. Take care, everyone. Hope to see you tomorrow. And if you like what you see, why not give me a thumb?